Welcome, everyone, to episode 33 of the Niche 2 Profit Show here on the Vegas Video Network. And it's our Christmas show, in case you couldn't guess. Got all the, all the little goodies around here. And today is my little gift to you. I announced this last week that uh, this week, no guests. It's all about questions that you sent in to me uh, about your eBay business and about your e-commerce business. Uh, so that's what we're going to cover today because I know this can be like confusing and overwhelming and frustrating and discouraging. And today we're going to talk about why it doesn't have to be that way. And of course, I am your host, Danny Ackerman, also known as the Danny App. And I have been selling on eBay for 18 plus years now. Wow. 18 years. I, I know I started when I was nine. I'm just saying. But really, I, I have spent the last a couple of decades on eBay. And before that, um, I literally can't remember when I entered the resale world, but uh, I grew up in the resale world. So I always said eBay was made for me. Uh, but what I do is I help online sellers who are struggling with the slow sales and not enough hours in the day to get it all done and having no life because you're working so hard and, and your PayPal account just doesn't show it. Uh, but I help you go from being an online yard sale, which is what happens, makes it all that way, to being a profitable e-commerce business. And uh, today we're going to cover some live listing reviews. We are going to answer your questions and we're going to show some hot sales of the week and play another episode of Pick It or Pass It. And that is where I show you a picture of something out in its natural habitat, aka the thrift store, and you get to decide, did I pick it or did I pass it? And uh, also, you also can tell me what it is and get two chances to be in our drawing for some pretty cool prizes. So, we are live here every Thursday at 3 p.m. on VegasVideoNetwork.com forward slash live. Except the next two weeks when we're taking a little break to celebrate the holidays. Uh, but we were, we're going to be back full swing uh, 1st of January and with some really incredible stuff coming. Uh, but without further ado, let's jump to some of the questions that were sent in and let's get you selling more, selling for higher profits and having more fun doing it. Uh, so our first question came in from Chandra Sanders. Uh, she sent in this question over on the Niche to Profit Facebook page. And uh, you guys, I, I would love if you all went over to that Niche to Profit Facebook page and gave it a little like. That would be really cool. Uh, but not right now. Watch the show first. You can do that later. All right. So she says, I have all these things to eBay, but I don't know where to begin or how to start. What would be your response on step one through three? Now, we all know there's few more than three steps to actually getting something listed, but we're going to have some fun with this question uh, because I am, I'm actually going to show you a live demo of me listing something. First time ever. So technology gods, let's, you know, just hope everything goes well. <laughs> All right. Uh, so here's step one. And this is assuming you have already set up your eBay seller account and your eBay PayPal account. Uh, I don't want to go into that because you can Google that. There, that's just a kind of a, a technical thing that you, you can get lots of, of help for out there. Let's talk about what do you do when you get that set up, you're ready to go, and you're going like, uh, now what, right? So step one, and this is for somebody who is brand new, never sold a thing before. eBay is going to give you some limits. So don't go crazy. Don't go find like 50 things you want to list. Pick out seven to 10 items that you want to list and preferably have them have some sort of something in common. Um, so if you're doing stuff from your kitchen, you know, do kitchen stuff. If you're doing clothing, do clothing. Try to make those seven to 10 things at least in the same category. It's going to make your life a lot easier. So you've got your seven to 10 items and uh, you're going to gather those up, have them nearby and 
That's the first thing. That right there, just from your question saying that I have all this stuff, I mean, that's the first place is to get out of that overwhelm of all this stuff. So, And, and this can go for you veteran sellers, too, who look at your pile of unlisted inventory and go, I don't even know where to start. Just pick 10 items. Just 10. Grab those 10 items. Get those done. And then there's always another 10. You can go and another 10. And then you just kind of start this cycle. All right. So we got our items. That's step one. Next thing you're going to have to do is take some good photos. Pictures speak a thousand words. It is those pictures that really get your items sold. Because a, a, a listing with a really bad picture is just, is just not going to sell for the kind of money you want to make. So... You want to find a white background, whether you, you know, get some photo paper or just a white sheet like I use. Yes, I just use a white sheet. Reason being, I can throw that sucker in the washing machine, throw a little bleach in there and make it good as new. Uh, So that is what I use. You want some good lighting. You don't want to do this in a dark room. You want to either use some really good natural daylight uh, or you fluorescent can work really good if you have you know your settings on your camera set properly for that the thing is don't mix types of lighting that's going to help you a lot so if you have a fluorescent light and a window close the blinds on the window just use the fluorescent light or vice versa but no mixing up of all those different types of lighting same with uh, incandescent lighting don't mix that with fluorescent don't mix that with daylight have a re- I mean, preferably when you get going, if you want to make this a business, you're going to want to get yourself some photo lighting. I, it's about a hundred bucks to get a really nice photo lighting setup. And then I, I have a room that I, the room goes black. I can tune out all other light, just turn on those photo lights that shine right on the item that I'm taking the pictures of. That is optimum. But I don't want you to be in this perfection syndrome and not get anything listed. So white background, most important, and some good lighting, no matter what type of lighting that is in just one type. Now, you take your pictures, go edit those pictures in a program such as Picasa. That's P-I-C-A-S-A. It's a Google program. It is free, and it is it is what I have been using since it began. I don't even know how old. Picasso is, but at least the last 10 years I've been using that. Um, I'm not a techie. I don't I do not do all this Paint Shop Pro and Adobe this and that. I don't, I don't get fancy. I need plain and simple. Picasso works really well, makes really good pictures because they have an auto contrast button that works 90% of the time to get the picture just what you need it to be. Crop out any extra and just pinpoint in on that item. Okay, so now you got your pictures. Now you want to write up your listings. And here's the thing a lot of sellers get hung up on is research. I have a rule. You do not spend more than five minutes on research. You go with what you know about the item. You know what you paid for the item. So you know what a good profit's going to be, even if you could get more for it. Get a good profit. My husband, he's actually in the studio today kind of watching the show, and he he has grilled on me for years. Can't go broke making a profit. Can't go broke making a profit. Right, honey? Yes. Yeah. Um, so that's the thing. We are in this business to sell stuff. So don't get hung up on getting like, but, 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 somebody else got, you know, $20 more than that. You want to make a profit. You don't want to spend a lot of time on the research to do it. Now, if you think you have some, like, amazing artifact that could go for millions of dollars, use auction format, okay? Um, but for the most part, you're going to want to use fixed price. And so we're going we're gonna to do something here. I'm, gonna sh- I'm going to list an item live on the air. Now, I've done a little pre-work because we only have an hour show and we have a lot to get to. Um, so what I have already done is I have taken the photos, I've uploaded those photos into this listing. So I'm pulling up a listing that I've already started, but this is going to show you, I mean, even if you hadn't already started it, this is going to show you all the bits and pieces of the listing. So the first thing you're going to do is you're going to pick your category. And eBay will actually help you with this. It gives you lots of suggestion stuff. If you don't know, you know, you can start putting in your title here. And um, like, I know I'm listing a lamp. 
So if I list lamp, look at how it's going to give me some example keywords. Uh, and then I'm going to say find categories. And it is going to pull up the most basic categories that these things are found in. So uh, we've already got our category. So I am just going <laughs> to hopefully go back to that. See, technology. Let's see if we can get this back up. There we go. All right. So I've got, uh, I'm listing a lamp. And for those of you who played pick it or pass it last week, this is going to be the uh, the answer to the question whether I picked it or passed it. Um, but I thought it would be a good example. So then you have store categories. Now, if you haven't opened a store yet, no worries. Don't worry about this. You won't even see the option for store categories. If you went right in and you opened a, an eBay store, you're going to get an option to put things into categories. And you get to select two for each item. So I've selected two categories for this lamp. I don't save things to inventory. I don't mess with that. So now you get to describe your item. We've got, and let me just show you what, what we're listing here. We've got this handy dandy antler mossy oak table lamp here. Ta! All right. And so um, we're going to talk more about this in the pick it or pass it section. But yes, I am listing this, but... I am not putting mossy oak as the first terms because I'm selling this on the factor that it is a deer antler camouflage lamp. So those are the words I'm going to use. And uh, you watch this show, you're going to hear a lot about titles. We talk about that a lot. So so you put in your title, you put in your condition. It's used. Um, if there's no major defects, I just say ex excellent condition. Please see photos. If there is a little ding or a dent or something on it this is where you want to note it right and actually this does have um slight wear and we're just going to note that please see photos i do not go into every little bump scratch thing on everything list i really want them to go look at the pictures so i'm not going to scare them away with too much description of damage but i am going to give them something that says hey go take a peek Make sure this is still what you want to buy. All right. And then here is where we have added our photos. Um, now, you can see I've already got the photos here, but it's just this add or edit photos. You can even edit your photos right here on eBay. You don't have to go use Picasa. Um, it's a little bit more limited, but you can crop and you can adjust the brightness and the contrast on here. So, so we've got our photos. Get out of that. Now... And that background is my sheet. It's just a white sheet. I'm telling you, it's, wor it's worked for all these years. All right. Now you go into your item specifics and um, we put the country or region of manufacture, if you know it. If you don't know it, there is a place to put unknown. And I actually use unknown quite a bit. Um, the brand is Mossy Oaks in this place. And we, and I happen to know that this is the model number. If there's anything in these item specifics that is pre-filled that you don't know the answer to, you can either remove it or put unknown. Perfectly okay. But you do want to fill out these item specifics because mobile shoppers don't see the whole description like the PC shoppers do. So they do see those item specific little nuggets of information. So if there's something you really want your customer to know, make sure you put it in your item specifics. It's also searchable by eBay's search algorithm. So really important area. Now I happen to have a template that I use over and over and over again. Um, for you, this might just be plain and that is perfectly okay to start out. All right. So, uh, but the most important thing about your description is you want to put four to five bullet points Bullet points are simply features of the item you're selling. This is, this is not um, saying it's beautiful. This is not saying why they should buy it. This is simply the, the size, the weight, the attributes of that item. So we give them that. I reiterate the condition here in the description. And then I do give them a little benefit of purchasing this and in this case it's a great gift for any hunting fanatic it's cheesy but retail's been using this for i don't know how many years and they're still using it so i'm going to keep using it 
Um, when the big guys say this no longer works, nah, maybe I'll quit. Um, but people do need sometimes that little nudge of, oh, it's a great gift. Who knew? So then we get down here. Don't worry about listing designer. Don't worry about all that extra stuff. That is eBay's way of trying to get a few extra bucks out of you because there's a lot of little, we can charge you more money stuff down here. All right. Now choose a format and a price. As I said, I'm a big, big fan of fixed price, specifically good till canceled. Good till canceled means you're going to list it once and every 30 days, eBay's automatically going to relist it for you again. And they are going to charge you the listing fee. Uh, but that way you're not messing around dealing with it. It also, if somebody saved it on their watch list or um, Google happened to index it in somebody's blog post or something, you're not going to lose your link. Uh, so you want to do that good till cancel. Now, I set a price on this of $49.95. And I do best offer. I love best offer. People love to haggle. They love to get a deal. Um, a lot of times, people will just pay full price. So don't think that they're going to, you know, talk you down on every single thing. It's a beautiful thing that way. Uh, so I'm willing to take $40 on this for anybody who happens to want a mossy oak antler table lamp that's watching. <laughs> yeah, that's right. All right. I do not use automatic decline. I don't use it. I don't use it. I don't use it. And I will tell you why. You knew I'd tell you why, right? Uh, the language that eBay sends out when that is automatically declined is so cold and callous and not my brand personality for my business. That's not what I want my customers to see. I want a little control over anybody who engages with a listing of mine with an offer, even if it is one of those dreaded lowball offers I want to have a conversation with them, even if it is a thank you for your offer. Uh, right now, that's a little bit less than we can take for this item. But what I tell them, save it on your watch list. It may go on sale in the near future. Now, they're probably too cheap to ever come back and buy it again. But if they do happen to put it on their watch list, guess what that does for you? That raises it up in the search index. So uh, we love those lowball offers. You, you guys love your lowball offer people. They are helping your business. All right. We get down quantity of one. Like I said, good till canceled. Now you have two options. You can start the listing right away. We're going to go ahead and do that. Or you can schedule it out. Scheduling costs 10 cents. And I schedule out a lot of stuff because I'm very strategic on when I want my listing starting. I want things coming up every day. And if I want to take a week vacation of not listing, I still want stuff starting every day. Uh, so I will pay that 10 cents. And, and my theory there is if you don't have an extra 10 cents of margin in your item, we, that's a whole nother conversation. We got to look at what you're listing. Uh, so 10 cents, nothing to be able to have that freedom to have it start when you want to. And Linda says, what does the customer see when we automatically accept their offer? Oh, they see you just bought this. I mean, it just boom. They, they, it automatically accepts and they get told that their offer has been accepted. It's a beautiful thing. I love when that happens. All right. And then PayPal. You're going to select PayPal. That's why I said you got to have your PayPal account set up. You just put in your details here. I do not require immediate payment. Don't. No, 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 no. People, people, we don't want them to buy just one thing. We want them to go shop for some more. Fill that shopping cart with stuff from your store. If you require immediate payment due, bam, they're done. They're checking out, gone. Yes, we do get some unpaid item issues on eBay. It is the only site out there where this happens. It is minimal, you guys. It's minimal. It is not worth cutting off your nose to spite your face and saying, nope, I'm going to make everybody pay right away because most people do pay right away. All right, so don't do that. Again, very unfriendly. Um, now the shipping. This is the part I know just perplexes a lot of you. I use calculated cost which varies by the location. And I do that because I use 
one item first. So we're going to go FedEx Smart Post. Really cheap for me to use that. I choose free shipping. Only have to give one option of free shipping. Now I'm going to let them use doo -doo -doo, priority. And I'm also going to put an express in there so that we can do the get it fast. You want get it fast to say yes. Oh, handling time. Do one day. You want to get this stuff out the door. That doesn't mean you have to ship same day. That means you have one whole day to get that label printed and then get it out the door. All right. And let's see. Fran says, uh, uh, opinions on the, you guys, I don't have my glasses. I have to squint. Best postal scale to use. Scott's reading in my ear. I love it. You missed your glasses? You got your director to give you a yellow there. I love it. Um Postal scales, you know what? This is really funny, you guys. I'm going to have to take a picture and show you what I use. I use an old-fashioned, like a kitchen scale that goes in one pound increments up to 10 pounds. And I do that because I never have to worry about batteries dying. I never have to worry about turning it on. I just put the item up there. Bam, it's working. I love it. I found it at a thrift store for like five bucks. Um, so that's what I use. There's lots of digital ones out there. You should not have to pay more than like $25, $30 at the most for a scale. Um, so paying more doesn't mean better scale. It just doesn't. I mean, it's a pretty scientific specific thing, a, a scale. You know, it, it it's going to work. I mean, what, what? why do they charge? Like, I know there's scales out there for like $100. What do they do different? They weigh the damn thing. Okay. Oh, I said a swear word. Okay. All right. So we've got that now. Yes, there's the whip. International shipping. I know. Another perplexing issue for you guys. I use calculated. It's great. Doesn't matter if the postal amounts go up. It goes up with it. It. There's a word I'm looking for that's just not coming to my brain right now. No, it, it will. God, what is that word I'm looking for? Jeez. I'll remember it halfway through the show. Okay, anyway, you want to use calculated shipping so you don't have to worry about going in there and changing any shipping. Also, say, stay away from the global shipping program. Bad. We'll do a whole other show on that one day. All right, so first class international is anything under four pounds. And I'm going to give them priority international. And I'm going to give them express. Give them choices. Give them choices. And this is where you do this. Put in your package dimensions. And the weight. So the dimensions, I don't change this for every item unless it's oversized. This is a anything under 12 by 12 by 12 is a standard size, not going to change things. If it goes over that, you really want to have those dimensions in there because then you get into dimensional weight. All right. Then we put the weight. Now, I actually like to put a custom weight so that I can put in ounces. In this case, um, I actually know that the actual item weighs four pounds so I'm going to add in another pound and a half for my packaging here. All right. And that is it. Now we just say continue. With the, oh, geez. See, I knew something would happen here. Well, it's always going to tell you why. It, oh, 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 I went over four pounds. Ha ha, caught me. All right, we just got to change that. Remove that one. We're all good. So right now, now my fees say zero because I have a store and this is included in, as one of my free listings for my store. So I'm, I'm in there. Watch this little extra stuff. This is where they try to get you right now. Gallery plus free. I'm good with that. That one though, depending on the category could be a dollar. So make sure you, you check those fees and make sure they're not adding something in there. So there we go. And dun, dun, dun. <laughs> there it is. It's listed. That's it, you guys. That's a listing. And now it's not going to take as long because you're not going to be explaining to a whole audience of people how to do this. So it's a much faster process. But, but basically, that is your listing. All right. Yay. Okay. I'm watching my time here. I got to get this. I got to get this other question in here. We can't just do one question. And this is... I think this question is going to resonate with a lot of you out there. Um, it's a super important question that I want to answer. It comes from Charlotte. Charlotte, I could not say your last name. So we're going to say Charlotte S. Um, 
I used to sell way more and it was fun. Now I can't seem to get anyone to buy my stuff and I am ready to give up. Oh, this breaks my heart, you guys. I am seeing so much of this out on Facebook. You guys are getting frustrated and discouraged and disgusted with things going on with eBay. And I'm not, I am not going to defend eBay. I have experienced it along with you. I'm a seller. I get it. The glitches can cause some insanity. Uh, But here's what I want you to keep in mind. So first, Charlotte, I am so sorry you're feeling this way. Anybody who's feeling this way, uh, I get it. I so get it. But here's the deal. This is why you can't give up on eBay. We have evolved in the e-commerce world, and it is not what it used to be. We used to call it the good old days. But really, those of you who were selling back in the beginning, come on. We didn't even have digital cameras. No, no, no. We didn't have all these little tools and things to do our shipping. We had to write labels. We had to send our film off to be developed, bring it back, scan pictures on a scanner. Oh, my gosh. And we call it the good old days, right? But I, that's that's how things work. I mean, we get more frustrated the more things evolve and get easier. We expect them to be easy. So uh, here's what's going on. I actually wrote down some numbers for you guys. And you, I, don't, I don't do numbers well. This is a math-free zone. But we're going to do a little math because it's important. All right. eBay is still a traffic phenomenon. And what I mean by that is you have millions of people, millions with an M, going to eBay every month to buy stuff. Uh, The number specifically, and this was a few months ago, was 70 million unique visits happen on the site per month. Per month. Okay? That's a lot of people buying stuff. So think if you could just grab, and I did half a percent, like half a percent of that traffic, that is 350,000 people. That is still a lot of people, right? Okay, they're not all going to buy. We get that. So how about if they landed on a listing because it was really something that interested them, right? So they come over to your listing, and let's say just even 1% of those end up buying something. You with me on this? All right, so let's say your average selling price is $20. And you stick with me, it's going to be a lot more than that. Let me just say that. So that's 3,500 sales times $20. Anybody doing the math out there? That's like 70 grand. That's like 70 grand, right? So uh, that's the possibility. That's why I teach niche. Because if you grab that half a percent of the traffic that's coming to eBay, and then they come and shop your store, and all your stuff is interesting to them, they're going to come back for more. They're going to take note of who you are on eBay and you're going to get them on your newsletter because, ah, here's what else you get with eBay. You get their name, you get their address. Many times you get their phone number and you get their email address. They are your customer now. Yes, they are your customer now. Bank that. Uh, and, and that's just huge. So you don't want to give up on eBay. So I hope that helps you guys put some of this in perspective. It's business. It's not personal. So if sales are slow or people are not liking your stuff, look at it and go, okay, what do I need to do? Because that's what a big retail would do. They wouldn't just fold shop. They'd go, okay, we got we to gotta fix this up and do something, right? So if you are going through some of these frustrations and discouragements and want to do more on your eBay store, why don't you head over to the dannyapp.com. Come join us at the Danny App Academy. This is what we do. You guys, it's 10 bucks a month. Yes, 10 bucks a month. We help you solve these problems. We get you through your discouragement and your frustration. And while we may not be able to fix the glitches, we can absolutely talk you through them and talk you off the ledge many times. I get it. So uh, come on over and join us over there. All right. And 
Let's go take a quick break and come back and look at a few Why Won't They Buys. Millions of online sellers are looking for one identity to use in thousands of platforms. E-Rated manages your reputation by importing unlimited social media, marketplace, and behavioral data. It reveals your cross-platform performance, compares it with competitors, and calculates your e-worth. And it gives you the tools you need to improve sales and find room to grow. Discover your e-worth and your own reputation ShareYourReputation.com and use the code Danny Deal if you would like to get any of their premium services for 20% off. All right, now let's look at a couple of listings and figure out why won't they buy. Okay, our first listing comes from Nancy Modab. She says, I have two kinds of this diaper bags for more than two years. They don't move, even though they're an expensive brand. Please help. We're here to help you, Nancy. All right. So I pull this up. It is a, I don't even know how you say this. Owee, owee, or wee, wee. I don't know. A wee, wee diaper bag. Who knew? Okay. So first thing, title. You know, I'm always looking at the title first. I did a little research. Um, top retailers call this a, uh, a wee, wee chocolate pink messenger nappy bag. Leave all that other stuff out. Take out the brown, take out the and, um, ba -ba 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 -ba, take out the NWT, simplify that title as much as you can. Now, here's, a, oh gosh, I love giving this advice. I'm going to tell you right now, people are looking at $14.99 going, what is wrong with it? This is a hundred dollars. This is a $200 diaper bag retail. You could easily up that price to $99.99, $99.99. And my dear. Please use free shipping on this. Free shipping. I would bet that this weighs under three pounds, and you could go with expedited shipping on this. Um, really boost that value. And, and being as you're willing to take 15 and eight, you're willing to take less than $25, um, I'm thinking that you'd be willing to even spend $20 on shipping to get a $100 sale, because that's still $80 versus your, yeah, got it. So um, depending on how long this has been listed, you might want to just end it, sell similar, start it over. Uh, if you haven't had it listed this time very long, you can just go in and revise it. Um, and that's just going to spruce it up and, and show people a different listing. So now the other thing was, I was a little confused by your photos. Um, the first one's okay. But as we got in here, let me go over here. Um, it's really, I, I, I know what you're taking pictures of, but I think you want to back up from the item a little more. Don't crop it quite so tight, uh, show it a little better. And I don't think you need to show this. You can show that it's got the new with tags, but you don't need to like do a close up of the barcode. Um, but it, you know, and the other thing is Nancy, I'm guessing that you're not niched in like baby items and mother to be items. And that makes it a little more difficult to get these items sold. So if you have some other items that you can list that we're going to draw people to this listing, that is going to help as well. So there's some sites uh, I found uh, there's like a fishpond.com site that sells this for like $130. Go over, find that. Do a Google search for this and check out the images that they use. Because I'm telling you, images are really, really important. They strike emotion in us. All right. Um, next, and this is my mama. Mama sells these stockings. So uh, she created this pattern herself in 1975. And this year she's only sold a couple of these on eBay. Uh, she's been selling them over on Etsy since 2010. Uh, but the thing that's cool about these, and I brought <laughs> I brought some. She makes them for all our family. They're hung on the fireplace. She customizes them. You can actually tell her what you want on the face of the stocking, and you can give her a name to put on the top. These are customized. These are personalized. Oh, value, value. Here, and they come in different colors. See? It's my grandson's. All right. So, Mom. First of all, I did a little research. People aren't searching for old-fashioned handmade Christmas stockings. No, no, no. You know what they want? They want 
personalized Christmas stockings. That is what they're looking for. So if you put in that title, personalized Christmas stockings, handmade crochet, going to come up a lot more in search. The other thing is do a multi-variation listing on this because in your pictures you show a green one, you show a red one. It's a little confusing. I would um, put a picture that showed multiple ones of these stockings with all the different things you do with them and then do the variations of red or a red on white, white on red, you know, with your green, all that. So they can choose the color they want. And then just, and the other variation would be personalized, yes or no. So you know when they're placing the order if they're going to want a name on it. So you can do that. Um, and then, oh my gosh, twenty nine ninety five. Oh, these are personalized. These are customized. Raise that price to forty nine ninety five. I'm telling you, people pay way more than that even for handmade, personalized stockings. So I'm going to be easy on you. I know you're, it's like it's a rough boost to go up much higher. There's that fear you're not going to sell any, but you're not selling any now. So what the heck? Right, so $49.95, multi-variation and personalized. That will get those sold. All right. Now, obviously, we cannot cover everything in a five-minute segment on the show. Um, but please, come on over. If you would like your listings reviewed, if you would like your business reviewed, we got something new. We got something fun. We have uh, something that is going to help you make more money, make higher profits, and get your business working for you in a way that you're not feeling all discouraged and frustrated because you're not getting any sales. Go on over to the dannyapp.com forward slash business review. Let me see if I did that right. Yes, I did. The dannyapp.com forward slash business review. And I am going to do a 25 point business review and show you all the different ways you can fix up your business. Get more business, get more customers, get more sales, guys. And I have, of course, a special for my viewers. Yes, I'm introducing this at 197. Oh, no, not for you. You're going to get 100 bucks off. Use the code N2P, N, the number two, P, 100 bucks off through the end of the year. And I am going to get your business where you want it to be. All right. And when things are where you want them to be, you have hot sales. Oh, stopped. <laughs> I love my music. Okay. Our first hot sale of the week comes from Ray Walker Osenbaugh. I love this story here. Let me let me pull up the full original listing here. I'd totally pick up a can of Fritos too, by the way. I love this weird stuff. Weird stuff sells, you guys. Weird stuff sells. So here's the story behind this. This can of Fritos is a manufacturer sample of a product, but it never made it to market for public consumption. It appears to be for use in a vending machine. I found it at a local Goodwill last summer. And uh, she had posted about this over in the Appster's thread, which she points out to me. She only paid two bucks. Two bucks. Well, she says actually $1.80 if you count her senior discount. <laughs> Love it. All right. So this can sat on her desk until mid-October when she finally decided to list it, figuring eh, she should be able to get about 100 bucks for it. I like this part. Remembering Danny's theory about selling high, I listed it at two fifty dollars with best offer. Good for you. Friday evening, her phone went ka-ching. He's not ready to push the button. Yeah, see? Ah, see, there he goes. Oh, he says he doesn't do ka-ching until I tell him how much it sold for. But that was a perfect, okay, never mind. I, have to, I know, it's all good. <laughs> uh, yeah, we get to talk. You guys can't hear what he's saying. It's probably a good thing. All right, and... She says she just about fainted when she glanced over to see what sold. A man in Texas bought and paid for it. Full asking price, all within a minute's time. $250. $250. Yay! 
So she says, after sending it out the next morning, I sent my customer a note to advise him that I had put signature confirmation on it and to ask why he wanted the can of Fritos. This is beautiful. This is what I love about eBay, you guys, right here. The response? My grandfather was Herman Lay. It will never be opened. It will now sit on my desk. Thank you for this gift. That is that is only on eBay, my friends. That only happens on eBay. I am telling you, that is a beautiful thing. All right. Yay. And she says now that just paid for all of her grandchildren's Christmas presents. That that is I love that. Yay. Awesome story. All right, Serena. Oh, Serena, did you sell something on Etsy? Let's see. There it is. All right. Serena Lee says she got this bowl from a consigner. She does a lot of consignment. And she had it listed on eBay with best offer since June. Finally got around to listing it on Etsy 10 days ago. And it just sold for full asking price of $99.99. It was a consigner item. So she paid not a bit. Yeah, Etsy is is pretty good for the vintage items, you guys. Um, that is one of the things you can put over at Etsy is anything over 20 years old. And I do sell quite a few collectibles over there at full asking price. So um, excellent, excellent. The thing about consignment is you don't, you don't have any skin in the game as far as uh, dollars into the inventory. A consigner gives you something and you, you do a split with them, 60-40, 50-50, whatever you work out with them. But uh, that can work out really well. All right. Let's see how we do. Let's go. Let's do one more quick one. Because Linda Pacheco sold this uh, 1970s piece of rock history. Sold it for, let me find it. Here it is. Oh, my good golly. Screen keeps going wonkers on me. Here we go. Uh, let's see. What'd you pay? Oh, here we go. Sold it for $100. Um, this was something from her, hus- her husband purchased at the California Concert Series back in the day, 1970s. So she doesn't remember how much they paid for it, but it was in the 70s. And he bought it for himself. And now they just turned it into 100 bucks, which, yeah. yeah. And this, my friends, is only a small sample. It was really hard to pick out the hot sales this week because the scores thread was busting at the seams with some really cool items. And you can go see those over at the Danny App Facebook group. Um, Over on Facebook. Just go do a search. The Danny App. You'll find it. Come join us. All right. And now for a little something from a new sponsor of ours. Nothing is as exciting as watching your online store grow from an idea into a successful venture. But somewhere along the path, you'll inevitably have to navigate the agonizing maze of sales tax compliance. Unfortunately, it isn't easy. States, counties, and cities can all have different sales tax rates, which makes it frustrating to determine when and how much sellers must collect, which states are owed, and how much to remit back to each state. Keeping up with it all is extremely time-consuming, and it distracts you from what's really important. That is why we developed TaxJar, a perfect solution for online merchants that completely automates sales tax compliance, giving you peace of mind so you can focus on growing your business. How does it work? Set up an account, and in just a few minutes, you can connect TaxJar to all of the different platforms you sell through, including your online shopping cart of choice. TaxJar will then collect your sales data and automatically create state-by-state reports that show the taxes that have been collected for each jurisdiction. Every day, the reports are automatically updated with your latest sales. So when the time comes, you can easily file them or let TaxJar auto-file them for you so you don't miss any important deadlines. And that's it. TaxJar is super easy to use and requires no special tax knowledge. If you ever have questions, you're in capable hands. Our awesome support team is standing by to help you succeed. After this one-time setup, get back to growing your business and let TaxJar handle your sales tax nightmare. Sign up for a free 30-day trial and get started today. I love Tax Jar. I I met them when they were first starting up that business, and I thought, oh, that is genius. Because what is the one thing that is one of the, the most overwhelming, confusing, frustrating things for those of us who don't do numbers? This is stupid sales tax stuff, especially on Amazon. So uh, they take all that confusion out of it. And we are going to have them on the first part of January. So 
Uh, you're going to get to ask him questions about sales tax and how that affects you and what's going on in that whole sales tax world. So i um, very excited to have them on as a sponsor. And um, yeah, go check them out now. Don't wait for them to come on. the Go check out taxjar.com. It is just a brilliant service. Does it all for you. Love it. Okay. So I uh, want to go into our a little uh, pick it or pass it. Okay, so as you could see, uh, our item this week obviously was picked. Uh, and I have a little story to tell you about this because I probably shouldn't have picked this based on the brand Mossy Oak Lamp. They don't sell for a ton of money. But here's the thing that I always tell you guys is if you know your customer, you don't always have to go with the flow of what all the other retail is doing out there. So I went on I appeal on this item. Um, it was a slam dunk for me. I think I, I spent nine bucks on it uh, because it was 40% off day. And it just, it, it drew me. I mean, it called to me from the shelf. You guys, you got that? You know how that works, right? The item just says, buy me. So I had to buy it. Kind of like that. And uh, so I bought it. And then I did and then I did a little research on Mossy Oak. And I thought, oh, crap. This is like a, it's kind of like a Target brand. You know, it's cheap. Uh, so as you can see, when I listed this item, let me go back to it. Pull up the item now. You notice I didn't lead off with Mossy Oak as what I was selling it on. I let off with the deer antler camouflage lamp. That's the appeal. That's the value. Now I'm also giving them, you know, free shipping, which a lot of other sellers aren't doing on these bigger items. So I, as you can see, I'm going to take 40 bucks on this. I'm not going to make quite the profit that I had anticipated when I picked it. Um, but I'm telling you, I'm still going to do okay on this because it is an eye appeal item. I mean, somebody's going to go, Oh, Man cave, cabin, and it's and it's winter. People are going up to their cabins. So a little creative marketing on this item, uh, it's going to sell. And I will let you know when it sells. Um, and just a little update, something that was one of the pick it or pass it items a couple weeks ago, the Dodo Bird cookie jar, sold. $75. Yes. So just had to give you, give you that little update. All right. So... Let's get our little entries in here. You guys are busy. You're Christmas shopping. You're doing all that stuff. We didn't have a whole lot of entries. I'm telling you, you want to enter this because you can get some really cool stuff, which I'm going to show you in a minute. So we have uh, Marie Rivers. Marie said I passed it, but she said what it was. Uh, Carol Hearn. Carol Hearn, you know me. You know me well. She gets two entries because she guessed what it was, and she guessed that I picked it. We've got Sharon Odenal said I passed it, but she knew what it was. See, that's why I give you two chances. That's why I give you two chances. Anne Marie Marciano said I passed it, but she knew what it was. And Ron Fristo, Ron Fristo, you got two entries because you not only said I picked it, but you told me it was an antler. He actually went so far as to tell me that was, that was, those were <laughs> sheds, which is correct. So that's what it's called when they, those uh, lovely deer let go of those antlers so we can use them for stuff. All right. I'm going to hold it up. Sound like a sky. So demanding over there. All right. And the winner is... Ta -da! Let's see. Let's see who the winner is. Well, I photo this one good. Oh, we've got Sharon Odenall. See? Only one entry and you still won. See? It pays to play. And what do you win? Well, we have, you know what? We don't have any more minion bags. Let's see. So you are going to get the Niche to Profit Show duffel bag here. A little hand, what do you call it? Tote bag. There we go. It's a tote bag. Hey, if you go to estate sales, it's a super tip I learned from an estate sale guy. Bring a bag like this because then you can just put stuff as you're going room to room and take it up to the checkout. Works really good. Or you might prefer, I'll show you the backside first. Scott always loves when I show the backside first. This is the I Got Nichy watching 
the Niche to Profit show on the Vegas Video Network. There you go. All right. And send me your size if you want the shirt and your mailing address, Sharon, and we'll get that out to you. Now, this week, I got a fun little item here. Hope you can see that well. It is clue number one. Oh, la, la. This piece comes from France. Oh. Number two. Most people just use an old can in place of one of these these days. Number three. Priced at $4.99 with a 30% off discount. Oh, what to do? All right. Send your answers to niche to profit at Vegas video network.com that's niche to profit at vegas video network.com don't forget do both things if you can identify it tell me what it is and this time you got to give me the brand name you got to tell me who the maker is i know i'm gonna get tricky here yeah. and say whether i picked it or passed it picked it or passed it two ways to win there all right so I uh, I wanted to leave a little bit of time here at the end of the show. I know Scott's going, well, well, it's not what your sheet says. You know, you had more to do here. No, 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 no. See, he thinks I already gave him his Christmas present, but I wanted to do this live on the air. I'm going to open this. I'm going to open this one for you, Scott. So uh, first, let me just say, what are we, 33 episodes in, but I've been a member of the Vegas Video Co-op for longer than that. And uh, oh, there he is. Yeah. Um, so Scott has not just been the guy pushing the buttons and, you know, running the technical stuff. He has advised me and, and taught me so many things and been just a phenomenal director of everything. And those of you who used to watch me on, you know, live stream and spreecast and all that, you know how much better this show is now, right? Well, I have this guy to thank for that. So I had a little something made for you, Scott. Personalized. <laughs> what was I saying about personalized, right? Yeah, he's digging it. He's digging it. So this says, Scott Whitney, you're an amazing director, and you make the world a better place. So, so thank you. Uh, and I know my audience thanks you. All right, there we go. All right, guys, as I said, we're going to take a couple weeks off, but, but you can go and watch 33 shows, any of which you may have missed or just want to go get the information again. Where can you do that? Huh, I'll tell you. You can go to iTunes, of course, and you can go to YouTube, both on the Danny app channel, which is also where I put my motivational Monday videos. And you can go to the Vegas Video Network channel where you can see some of their other groovy shows. All right. We've got Roku and Stitcher, TuneIn and Chromecast, Apple TV, Google TV, Fire TV, and of course, VegasVideoNetwork.com. That's his favorite. Yeah. And just about anywhere else that plays videos because the Vegas Video Network rocks. Rocks. Yes. Um, so share it with a friend, guys. Tell a friend. We'd love to share. Don't be stingy. Don't keep all the information to yourself. I mean, I know. It's all good. There's only competition if you're being an online yard sale. Build your niche. There's no competition. You are unique. We can make that happen for you over on the Danny App Academy. Come join us. And with that, Merry Christmas. Happy New Year. And with that, go be profitable and make it fun.